Welcome to the Mason & Associates YouTube channel. I'm John Mason, President and Financial Planner at Mason & Associates. We're financial planners first, and we do this second. So we have this YouTube channel, as well as our Federal Employee Financial Planning Podcast. Our mission with this content creation is to help educate you as federal employees on your complex benefit package and give you some ability to maybe take some action. Now, this is not financial planning advice, but we're hoping to empower you through education to make more informed and accurate decisions as you lead up to your retirement and with your benefits. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about picking the best day to retire as a FERS employee, that's Federal Employee Retirement System, or picking the best day to retire as a CSRS, Civil Service Retirement System. It seems like it would be very easy and, and oftentimes it's really, it's, it's messed up and we see this happening time and time again. So one of the things we do is we help clients prepare for retirement. Number one, that year of retirement, we wanna pick a date. And the date is very important because we don't wanna have a gap in pay. So my first employees out there, if you're thinking to retire at the end of 2023, we're really looking for two things. We wanna retire at the end of the month and we wanna retire at the end of a pay period. Most importantly, it's the end of the month. The end of a pay period is a nice to have, and I'll touch a little bit on that later. But why is the end of the month so important? The end of the month is so important because your retirement is effective the first of the following month. So let me give you an example. You retire at the end of this year, December 30. Your retirement will become effective January 1st, and you will receive your first interim paycheck sometime around February 1. So there's about a, a little gap there. You have a month where you retire December 30, first retirement check comes in in February. Now that in itself is scary, but let me put this out there too. January is not gonna be that bad. Why not? January is not gonna be that bad because you worked all of December, which means you're going to get a paycheck in January for those last two weeks that you worked. In addition, you probably are carrying somewhere between 200 and 400 hours of annual leave. Guess what? That's also paid out in January. So January is a really easy month. Um, it's gonna be front loaded. You'll receive a lot of that pay early, but the first month where you're really gonna feel retirement income is going to be in February. So just keep that in mind as we do get a little nervous. We see it all the time, getting a little nervous leading up to retirement. What's that first month going to look like? So let's go back to this example. Remember, December 30, you retired. First retired paycheck is coming in February. Let's pretend you didn't watch this video and you retired one or two days later on January 1st. How does that impact everything? Well, if your retirement date was January 1st, it's now not effective until February and you wouldn't even receive your first retirement paycheck until March. So because you retired one or two days later, we extended that time frame by an additional 30 days that we can never get back. So first employees, very important. We want to make sure that you retire at the end of the month. Typically, we're recommending the last two or three days or even the last day of the month. Now, remember, we also said that it's important or if you can, you want to also pick the end of a pay period. And the reason you pick the end of a pay period is because that's where you get maximum accrual for your sick leave or annual leave. If you retire in the middle of a pay period, you don't accrue all those benefits. So um, if you Googled best day to retire as a federal employee, you'll find those dates. And we're gonna show them here on the screen as your best days to retire as a FERS and CSRS. It's going to be the end of the month and the um, end of a pay period is what you're shooting for. CSRS folks, I know there's not a ton out there, but you're still there. Civil Service Retirement System, you're the ones hired before 1984 in the system that doesn't pay into Social Security. Yours is a little bit different. So as a CSRS employee, we're still looking for the end of a pay period, but it's the last three days and the first three days of the month. So for a CSRS person in that same example, December 27th through January 3rd, effectively you're you're retired is effective January 1st. So last three to first three of the month if you're CSRS. And again, if possible, you'll want to pick the end of the pay period. This has been another episode at the Mason & Associates YouTube channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave those below. Concerns, fears, what keeps you up at night? We'll do our best to answer all those questions as well as the questions you didn't know to ask. We'll see you next time.